day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. So when I should say, you still want me to go down to 20? Yeah, go ahead. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trusts to his own righteousness well, and commit iniquity, come on now. all his righteousness shall not be remembered. Come on. But for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Right. Again, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. If he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right, if the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed, walk in the statues of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live. He shall not die. None of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him. He hath done that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live. Mm -hmm. Yet the children of the people say, the way of the Lord is not equal, but as for them, their way is not equal. Uh -huh. The righteous turneth from his righteousness uh -huh. and committeth iniquity, he yes. shall even die thereby. Yes, but yes. if the wicked turn from his wickedness and do that which is lawful and right, he shall live thereby. Uh -huh. Yet ye say, the way of the Lord is not equal. O ye house of Israel, I will judge you every one after his ways. His own ways. And I like that because to be brother there are saying is when they say unrighteousness, they're talking bad fruit, right? And and God recognized that and says if that person turns, and that's why I always look at it, Jim, I said it was not etching stone. If a person turns, and that's what even Jesus said when he came in, the first thing he started preaching is repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. So, so let me ask a question. So, so what are we saying about Solomon in context of all of this? Solomon? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What about him? What are we saying about him in this context? Because he, he, we know that all he did, but we know at a certain point, he turned the wrong way. Right. And as far as I can see from the scriptures, he stayed that way all the way to he passed. So in the context of that and this, what are we saying? Anybody? Well, I'm, I'm, in, the I'm, of the, in the context of that verse that he just read. See, that, this is the thing. And whenever you start dealing with God, it doesn't matter in the Old Testament or the New Testament. What God is looking for is faithfulness demonstrated through continuity. Mm. The, the race is not given to the strong or to the swift, but he that endureth to the end. Paul said in Colossians chapter 1, if you be not, if you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Jesus said in John chapter 8, if you continue in my word. Yes. It, it's, listen, it's continuity. It is it is the only way for the world to see that the gospel is, in fact, what the gospel says it is. If you, have, if somebody gives you a dose of the gospel and your life continues to be wishy-washy, if you, if you claim that you have eaten the word of God, and that through that eating, that's what Jesus said. He said, if you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink your blood, you got no life in you. Right. If you say that you become a partaker of the very life of Christ, and yet your living don't reflect that. Mm. Listen, that's why Generation Z won't come to church now. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I think hey, y'all talk, talk all this stuff. Y'all got this good, y'all talk all this stuff and sing these hymns and do this stuff, but y'all, y'all, y'all slipping and dipping and y'all doing all this stuff. They see it, the whole world. And, and they know the difference. Yeah. And basically now they don't wash their hands up and say, we, we don't want no part of that. Because we don't show the mercy of God. Because we ain't got a good report. 
So continuity continuous in, in such a way that that listen, Israel was guilty of this. God said, because of you, that my name is blasphemed among the Gentiles. Because of how y'all living? Y'all, I'm singling you out as the elect. You are my people. I chose you to be the one to propagate this gospel. And yet, yeah. because of your living, the Gentiles are blaspheming my name. Yes. So we have to understand that when you're bearing fruit, this is not, this really is not about you. <laughs> this is about God. Come on. And this is about the testimony. This is what people are going to think about God because of what they see in you. Yeah. Wow. Talk about you, but wow. you know, for me, that's the last thing on the planet I want is for someone to think. Well, that God is not God. Good. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, hey, don't, hey, give, hey, hey, don't, hey, don't like, get me I, wrong. I like Jesus. Go ahead, Jim. No, you uh, go ahead, Pastor. Hey, Jim, I like that's what I like when Jesus said, Why call it me good? What? 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 No, don't call. You can't even call. Jesus said, You can't even call me good. There's none good but the Father. So, so when a good tree, if you're a good tree, you're good because of him, not because of you. And then I think for the world to know is that, that that's why we're under that grace, and that's why we need the salvation, and that's why we need that mercy. Even in this, I brought this up in John uh, 3, you know, where it said, everybody know the first scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But those last two, 20 and 21, for everyone that does an evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that does his truth, that means the word of God, cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest that they are wrong. Remember we talk about that word, Jim, what wrong means? That, that means God is doing the workmanship. That's, that lines up with what brother, what uh, Elder Bishop said in Ephesians, we are His workmanship. That Roth means our deeds are manifest and being firm and shaped by God if we allow it to be that way. But if, if you go, if you're going to be a bad tree, you're going to stay in the darkness, or you will come out to the light, so your deeds can be yeah. manifest. And you know, I think that's you know, a good point. And then I think I think the bishop brought out some good points because he talked about Israel. And things come to my mind, you know, he's right about the reputation of things and, and the reason why these young folks now won't come to church because of the hypocrisy that we live and display before them, calling ourselves righteous, but doing everything and trying to justify by other means. I'm a Christian right. from the head up, but from the ways down, I'm still a man. These type of comments and lifestyle that that uh that kind of stay with that. And I hear what he said, Israel. And Israel did kind of, was always stiff-necked and always rebelling and, and, and willing, uh, whoring after other gods and all kind of craziness all throughout their whole lifestyle. But yet he said, but all Israel shall be saved. I mean, we take it out of context, but then he went to, then he went to that point. And then, and then I hear what you're saying too. So then that tells me then. So now, uh, I guess I, I don't know. The scriptures do kind of, I guess, Condemn Solomon. Well, oh, yeah. But, but we know that did. God is the, but, but the bottom line is he's the judge, right? He's the judge. Yeah. He's the judge. No, no, no question. And I think we need to stop judging. I think one of the problems us is we need to stop trying to put our own selves in hell. I'm, I'm, I, no. I, what I do you mean by on. trying to put ourselves in the hell? Huh? I don't think any one of us is trying to put ourselves in the hell, I think we're, in hell because <laughs> we're trying to establish ourselves securely in the heaven. I ain't going either. Hey, hey, I, I mean, I think we all have a desire to live godly. I think we have a desire to, and I think any of us that do something or things come up or certain lifestyles breathes our hearts, and we and we and we're obviously praying for deliverance in areas that we may feel that we feel that doesn't align up with the things of God. I think all of our hearts. Or towards God and to live right. I don't think right. anybody on this call has any intention whatsoever to live an ungodly life while professing Jesus Christ. I, I definitely don't don't believe that to be true. But uh, but uh, but uh, and the, your fruits. I mean, they gotta speak for you. I mean, your lifestyle has to has to speak for you. Uh, otherwise, like the bishop was saying, 
It's just not you you're hurting. I mean, you're 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 scarring the reputation of the things of God across the board. Where now people obviously their opinion of godliness yeah. is going to be based on you and what you've shown them, and therefore a lot of people even now have a negative uh, have a negative perspective on people of the Bible or people of the cloth or preachers or things of that nature because of us. It ain't because of him. It's because of us. It's his media outlet, his media firm is, is a disgrace to him because we poorly represented him and what he stands for. I, 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 I'm with that 100%. I agree with all of that for sure because uh, yeah. it's true. I think yeah. one of the things we can't lose sight of, though, is that as the scripture said, my, I'm the true vine. My father is the is the husband man, and they said the branch that does not produce will be cut off and thrown into the fire. But the one that does will be pruned that it might produce even more. Yes. It, it, it's someone else. Yes. We got an external source that's actually QA in this program. The eyes of the Lord are upon us, and where we are unable, and we really are unable to 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 fix ourselves. He he's already committed himself to fixing us. Uh, Paul said that he would complete the work that he had begun in him. He was assured of that that the father would come finish the, 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 the sanctification process in it. And so it is with us. Um, man, we do have some, some of us have some, we have issues from time to time, but we also have the rod and the staff there, and we have the chastenings and all that other good stuff that God can implement in our lives to uh, help us in those areas where we really are, are struggling. And, and none of that's beyond his doing. Right. That's the one thing we had, we take if the fear of the, the one scripture said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Um, sometimes we lose the, the idea. Is your mic? You might look close to the mic, I think. Yeah, my, my, my computer is like crapping out over here, man. I'm freezing, freezing yeah. every five minutes. You must have, but we have a, we have a father that we're chasing us. We have a father that we're chasing us, and he'll help us with those issues. All we all really do is just have to ask, and Lord help me. And, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't pick this. You gotta help me. And I think, I think the fathers that would, I find in a lot of cases, uh, Jimmy, even when we looked at that verse uh, concerning uh, the good fruit, a tree is known by its fruit. I, it, it, I just always want to call some people, as far as I'm concerned, is that you're known by the fruit that you bear. I'm just making sure you're not locked in that this is, this is you, this is your, this is a final definition of who you are it just means that you 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 that's where you are you you made mistakes and you you bear bad fruit but it doesn't mean that that's what i'm always going to be at i'm mean, in fact if you look at that word it said known by his fruit right but as that just mean no you're known by the fruit that you bear it just it doesn't mean that that's who you are does that make sense well we're not i don't think but, but we're not trying to go outside of the text. And the text is simply telling you that the kind of fruit you bear determines that people to identify what kind of tree you are. That's yeah. 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 Now, now, I don't want to get it caught up in because nowhere in scripture does God ever tell us see there are things we're told to judge and there are things we're told not to judge. Uh-huh. Amen. Now your works, we're told to judge. Mm-hmm. You know, how else are you gonna tell a brother how you can restore a brother from a fault if you don't know if you don't determine that he's gonna fall? Right. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> you know, but once once he learned that he's gonna fall, God says, okay, now now the question we ought to ask ourselves is and in Galatians chapter six, why is he telling you why does the brother need to be restored? Why is it not all right for him to continue to be there? Yeah. Why is Paul making a statement to tell you, don't leave a brother in a situation like that if you see him in a situation like that? Right. Right. That's all I like. Yeah. Well, because if he dies, like, they ain't going to hell. Well, you know, the other thing is, you know, to see to see a brother falling and, and you don't reach out and help him, that, that, that's nothing like like that's there's no Christ like in that. There's no love for your brother in that. So what fruit are you bearing at that particular point? Right. So it, but to 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 love a person to the point of doing what what you're capable of to restore him, 
<clears throat> then that's showing love. Also, what's showing love is if that person just rejects the love that you give them. Mm-hmm. You, you you can only do what you can do. I mean, yeah. they 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 rejected Christ in his hometown. So I, I just think that everything is motivated through love. And even to the point of loving God and, and Christ uh, is, is motivated as well. So therefore you bring forth the good fruit in that point. But the Bible also said that we're enticed of our own lust that draws us away from God. And, and, and everybody has to deal with that. I got a question. I got a question for you. Can, can a gay person love God? Yes. Okay. I, 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 I believe that myself. But then, but then, are they saved? I mean, you know. Well, that's just a sin. I, I mean, I, I look at <laughs> who are we to say who goes up and who goes down? <laughs> No, 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 we're not trying to judge on each other, but again, we were talking about lifestyle and so on and so forth. So I think that plays into this conversation in that yeah, if that's that, a lifestyle, then then uh then uh, what is then 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 these scriptures are saying something as well. If they fit one place, they gotta fit every place. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Lifestyle is what we're talking about. Well, I, I think not, right. not eternal judgment. But if we look in terms of that, then like, we talked about the porn uh, at the beginning of the session. Uh, they're, they're still Christian, and we were infected by this to the point that, man, it got epidemic at one point. Brothers who love the Lord who were caught up in pornography, can they go to heaven? Can they love God? Did they love the Lord? Truly, they, I, I think they love the Lord. But were they, were they caught up in the fall? Yeah, they were caught up in the fall. That's the lifestyle. Man, anything, anything that's not in alignment with the Lord Jesus Christ that's practice becomes a lifestyle. Yeah. It's, hate, it's hating people. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a lifestyle too. The biggest, uh, they, I love the Lord, but I hate Negroes. I love the Lord, but I can't stand white people. You know, we all got some things that's happening that we're practicing that does not necessarily impede, that does not, what can I say, negate our love of the Lord. It just shows the extent to which we do love the Lord. And, 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 I, and, I, and I think we have idols in some situations where we love our hate more than we do our God. Or we love our sex more than we do our God. I think it's unfair on a personal note to call a person, see a person totally as one biological act. Homosexuality deals with a person's desire toward sexual engagement. To say that that person is a homosexual totally is kind of like overextending the, extending the act. Nobody's a total homosexual when they were born. They don't even have a sexual desire. Normally, when we move toward our demise, we lose our sexual desire. So how can we just say that this person, a person practicing homosexuality, can they still love the Lord? Uh, Yeah, I think they can. Are they going to need to deal with that desire? Yeah, that's going to have to be dealt with. God is going to deal. God is going to have to deal with that. Just like a liar or a thief or 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 (laughs) homonger or 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 anything else. Exactly. I, I can't ride that one. Well, then that goes back to my thing, of what I've already brought before, which I deal with on a constant basis, uh, 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 I, well, which I think about on a constant basis. I don't want to, I, I, w- I would love to get married again. I mean, I know we've had this conversation before, and you already, and you already feel good about it, but uh, I still struggle with it. But I also know that uh, 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 I don't want to continue my life on the cake. Praise God, brother. Praise yeah. God. Well, you know, this scripture has admonishment along these lines. It's not like it's not like we gotta <laughs> scratch our heads and you know you you go to the scripture, the scripture tell you no fornicator or infamil yeah. or any of these people shall enter the kingdom of God. Word. There's no if, ands, and buts about this. Paul is clear. Even during the revelation is clear. No or adultery. Or hormone. I, because or people shall not. Yeah. And that's, that's why I have that problem. 
you talked about liars and old nine yards. So there, there's a need for creative action. And in, in, in I guess the place to start is with the Lord. Uh, we, we, as a body of believers, we can't condone actions that don't align itself with the Lord. Are we going to judge that person? The question becomes, why would we judge them when God himself doesn't judge them? He said, if a man does not keep my commandment, him I do not judge. Why? He's already judged. So our job becomes to restore that person with as much love as we possibly can muster to cause them to become comfortable in it with almost a system in, 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 their, in, their, in their eternal destruction. So I think we should definitely encourage each other in Christ. Not only does it align us spiritually and secure us spiritually, eternally, but it also helps to present we that light that Christ has called us to be in the earth. We are supposed to show up the right way. When people I think you're right. I'm sorry, I understand what you said. Question. In Ezekiel, when they talk about the watchman and his responsibility and, and so on and so forth, the watchman so, so, so he has a responsibility, regardless of what generation it is, to call what he see out, so that people know, and that's his responsibility. And he bears, and he bears, I guess, judgment on on, on whether he does that or not. I hear, I hear conversations about, you know, where were the where were the saints, where were the true children of God during slavery, and so on and so forth. And what was their position? What was the outcry? So on and so forth. Well, a hundred years from now, or if this world is still going on. Are they gonna look back at us and say, "Where were the watchmen during this this great move of this sexual orientation, trans, uh, female feminism? Where were the watchmen then? Where were the true believers of the church? They 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 may look back and ask those questions about us, like we'll look back and ask those questions about a previous situation. And so, but the job of the watchman doesn't change, and we have a responsibility." It doesn't regardless of the persecution that we may receive or whatever, because our responsibility wasn't given to us by man, it was given to us by God. And so I think that, that bears that bears witness that you're either gonna stay true to what you've been told from him, or you're going to uh you're going to tiptoe, you're going to sugarcoat, you're going to uh uh, uh use scripture to to marginalize. The, the gospel and say, well, you know, you know, God loves everybody and everybody's going to be fine in the long run. And I think that's an indictment against us. I mean, there has to be a line. There has to be a line drawn. It is, it's not gray, but the world has led us to believe that everything has a gray area. I'm like Lee. I think the Bible is pretty clear on a lot of stuff. He drew a line. He, he didn't give a, 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 a range so to speak. You know what I'm saying? There, 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 even, even in that line, there's a scripture that says the carnal mind is not subject to the things of God, neither can it be for their spiritual discern. So there's a prerequisite for even preaching that, uh, or teaching that, that sanctification in it that they got to, we got to introduce them to, and they got to receive the Lord Jesus Christ was even beginning to make sense to them. So at the time that we were preaching this thing, the one thing that we have not done is disciple people to the Lord Jesus Christ, even now. Initially, we did not disciple them to Christ. So we are asking them to actually perform at a level that they are not prepared to perform it, don't even understand the necessity for doing it. There are many children out there, and I know this, this generation is really having some issues, and that's why I think we need to be on our job because they don't even know Jesus, man. Not, these kids have not had Christ preached to them. We don't preach so much garbage to these children that it's amazing that they even have as much I mean, godliness in them is they do have because we preach materialism, we preach doctrines, we preach everything except Jesus. And it's almost like we need to start over again and, and, and witness to this nation again just from the foundations of repentance and salvation. Let me let me let me just uh let me just say this regarding this uh this uh homosexuality spill. Okay. Uh you see, we got to be crystal clear on this because the, the one thing that is most important to God rides on your body and how you use your body, which is what Paul taught to tell the Corinthians. He says, 
you realize now your body is the temple of God. Legit. And if you defile that temple, now in the Old Testament, man, uh, if you want to get in trouble quick, you mess around and step inside of a place you ain't supposed to be in. I touch something you ain't got no business touching. <laughs> if you see the ark of the covenant of falling and you think it's a good idea to keep, keep it from falling, reach out and grab it. You mess around and go in a place that you ain't supposed to be in regarding that holy place. And that was all, that, that, that was almost instantaneous death without asking any questions. With regards to your good intention. And he tells them, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. He says, of all the sins that a man could, can, could commit, when you start dealing with fornication and misusing this body, you're on dangerous ground. <laughs> Having said that, I, I can't, I can't, I, I, my message to any young person, look, I understand where you are. I understand where you are. If you're willing to have some conversation, we need to talk about it. You to understand how God has purposed and created you. Because all your plumbing say you're a man. But isn't is, is that the point that you said that same conversation with a, a, I have a question. an adulterer, a fornicator, yes, a drunkard? Yes, you see what I'm saying? Is, I, I yes, think, I, and I think the this is my opinion is that Jimmy is that we we bring people our job because I can I can't change nobody but I can do is point them toward Christ yes but, you know and I think that's the only way it's going to change anybody going to change is going to become like this I put up Romans 8 up here for a reason because we just came out of 7 we talked about where G, where the man said look you know I found out that I've tried to do good but I can't and then I realized the only thing that can save me is Christ Jesus. So I think, Jimmy, this is me. This is me. This deal with Brother Bell, this deals with everything. Is if we go, I'm gonna read this for a second and, and, and y'all can ride with me. In Psalm verse one. There's therefore now, not yesterday, not next week, now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. The key we gotta try to get people to do is who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit john 4 24 says god is a spirit and then you can only worship him through spirit and truth right but for the law the spirit of life in christ jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death for what the law could not do and i always like that jimmy at what the law could not do, Brother Bell, the fornicator is supposed to go that is going to be condemned. Drunk is going to be condemned by the law. But for what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, that's why we struggle, whether you're homosexual, whether you're drunk, whether you're fornicated or whatever, we, we, the law is weak through the flesh. God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemns sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, okay. but after the spirit. Now, can I ask something right there? Yes, sir. Uh, well, the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who Says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Yes, sir. Now, now you see, God has already condemned sin. Yes. In the flesh. Yes, sir. And when you yield your members yes. as instruments. You yield yourself into condemnation. And you're in the flesh. Yeah. Now, yeah. if you jump down to verse number 13, verse number 13 down at the bottom says, For if ye live after the flesh, yes. ye shall die. Yes. Amen, man. Amen. Yes. yes. Amen. 
Yeah. No, no, and this ain't, ain't, no, ain't no gray areas in this. Ye <laughs> shall die. Exactly. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body. Yes, sir. This is this is what you should have learned out of Romans chapter seven. Yes, sir. You should have learned that what, what, what is required of you is that you put to death yes. every impulse and passion and pull on you to try to get you to indulge sinful lust whereby sin is born in your life. And the way to do that, right? There, 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 I think there, there, I, I, but I, and all this is true, and I think in terms of the fivefold ministry is the thing that we're given to do when we interact with people to bring them into the faith and to edify them, is that there are certain things that have to be taken care of initially so that we can even establish a, a, a basis of communication. So from the just the uh, the recruitment perspective, anyway, preach Christ initially. Yeah. Yeah. Preach Christ. And and when that person accepts the Lord, I mean, God's also, we ain't working by ourselves. The Holy Ghost is out there doing some stuff. And I, I, I just want to say that having observed some homosexual interactions, some relationships, they ain't, all, not all of them are pleasant. You know, this is not something that people are, oh, this is the bomb. Not, they have tremendous problems with their relationship. Yeah, issues. Yeah, just like everybody else. So yeah, we got something else. that's working out there to help drive them for the Lord. So from where I sit, I'm preaching Jesus. When you accept Christ, yeah. then the teacher's gonna pick up there, and the teacher's gonna take you to the next level because there's not line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. But initial, the initial thrust for me right now is to get that word out there to uplift the name of the Lord Jesus. He said, "If, if I be lifted up, I shall draw all men unto me." That's that's. Yeah, that, 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 now that's a personal process from where I say as far as ministry is concerned. Yeah. What happens from there with the pastors and the teachers, I, I, I would assume that you, you guys are going to have greater eyes on the, in, in the discipleship uh, aspect of it. You know what I'm saying? But I think, I think